Do you use your H90 pedal just for delay and reverb? Are you still sticking with the factory presets? Within this compact box lies a universe of sound waiting to be harnessed. Join me as I take you on a journey through the three essential levels of H90 expertise. From the basics of preset exploration through some of the wild modulation effects and up to the intricate soundscapes you can create with insert effects and snapshots. We're here to redefine your sound boundaries. Are you ready to elevate your H90 game? Okay then, let's dive in. So the three levels of H90, at least the three levels that I think. So level one is taking the programs that they have given us and making them different, making them how we want to, at least exploring it in a way that makes it simple, but coming up with something which isn't straight out of the box. Program 12 here called Twisted Echo. This is exactly as it sounds when you get the H90. I mean, sounds pretty good to me. Okay, but how can we explore these effects more? So we have two algorithms. We have a tape echo on A and a reverb on B. So if I um, press this button twice to bypass B, then we only have the tape echo. And that's what it sounds straight out of the box. But what if we wanted to see what kind of effects we can get from Tape Echo. Well, if we press presets, if we press the presets button and make sure that A is selected Tape Echo, it'll tell us that at the moment we're on classic slap. Now that, that is the preset within the algorithm that is being used at the moment. And initially, when I like to explore anything new, what I will do is take what they give us and see what else we've got. So underneath, we can search and if I select the search down, if I don't even need to say that the type is delay, but if I select the algorithm to be tape echo, it's one of the uh, newer algorithms, and then use the select button, we can scroll through other presets. So now this combination of tape echo and reverb, if I turn the reverb back on, oh, we need to get out of here. This version of Twisted Echo is not the one that the box comes with. So let's go through and do that a few more times to see what else we can do. So if we go into our presets, make sure that the A tape echo is selected and that we are, by changing the third quick knob here, you can select what kind of algorithm. And if you go to, it's alphabetical. So if you go to um, T for tape echo, and then it's a classic slap, is what it was on to start with. Echo is this. And because it's tape echo, every time you change and the time is different, you get the uh, fluctuations in pitch. Okay, I like that. Let's stick with that. If we then do the same with the reverb, if we press the presets button again, Oh, I have, it's grayed out because I've bypassed it. So now it's not bypassed. We can then bypass the tape echo. And so we are now um, looking at the presets for the dual verb algorithm. So you see underneath it says algorithm dual verb, again, alphabetical, so we can go through all of them. But if I select dual verb, then scroll using the select button, you'll be able to see the kind of presets that the box comes with, but are not in this particular setup. Echo verbs. Empty streets. Space gap, a little bit of a delay and reverb then back to dual verb. So there we've gone through all of them. So I thought empty street sounded good. Yeah, so if we then go back. So we now have an algorithm, sorry, a program, Twisted Echo it's called, which is not the Twisted Echo that it came with. Now, if I save it, I will overwrite it here. Now, why don't we save that? If you hold down programs, and I change to user2, which is my list of programs, and we go to 
the next clean one, which is five, and press save program. And we will call it Twisted Echo JK. My initials, so that I know that this is the one that I have done. Save program. So when you do save it, bear in mind it does save over the factory preset that it comes with. Now you haven't actually changed any of the algorithms or any of the um, underlying presets or parameters, so you can always change it back, but just bear that in mind. Now if I go hold these two buttons here, you go to the system menu, and in global, I can change the playlist to user two. Oh, this all it's changed to uh, a different version, which is a, another effect that I made. But you'll see that five is the one we've saved. So we saved it to our own playlist. And that, for me, is level one. You're taking what's in the box and you're changing it and making it something that you like. And remember, once we've got this, we can then mess with the parameters. We can mess with these knobs here, which are the pre-selected parameters and change it even more. And there are six of them we have easy access to. And if you haven't seen my previous video on snapshots, you can take it even further and have three different versions of this particular program. I'll link the video up above. So level two, in my mind, on the H90, is where you take a completely initialized program and create something completely from scratch, something that doesn't exist on the unit at all. And this is what I've done. So I'm now on six, uh, in list two, um, which you can access through the global menu, and it's a completely initialized program. So this is bypassed, this is active, nothing happens. So let us mute algorithm B, and we'll choose something for algorithm A. Let's see what's there. And by making something complete, completely our own, I am gonna start with a preset or a type of effect that I like and then tweak it to my liking. So it's not gonna exist on the box to start with. So if we go through presets and you can do a search. So to start with, you can search on type. Um, and if I go back to, this is in alphabetical order. So there's obviously all, a delay, distortion, an EQ, a looper, modulation, multi, pitch, reverb, synth, utility. So there's a lot of different options. I'm going to try and make this one slightly more wild than the other ones that I've created, which are basically some sort of delay, chorus, reverb, things that are very usable. So if we keep it on pitch, let's see what we've got here. And as I'm scrolling through it, the, the preset is immediately active. In fact, this might be quite a long list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to um, polyphonic, polyphony, which is one of the new algorithms on this box and see what this has got to offer us. Okay, I like the sound of that. Let's select that. And let's select something for, before we go in and tweak that one, let's select a basic preset for B that we like as well. We'll go into presets again, but make sure that we're on B and we will bypass A and turn B on. Let's maybe have some sort of distortion, perhaps. I know that Weed Whacker is a new one, so let's see what this sounds like as well. See, that's, that, that sounds good. It's not too crazy, but I think we can drive that quite hard. So let's leave that there, and we will turn Polyphony back on. And we can also at this stage see which way around it sounds better. So if you press the routing button and you press the left hand button, it swaps them. So we have distortion first and then polyphony. We even have parallel, so it's going into each one. I think series sounds better. I think it sounds better if we add the distortion, the extra harmonics after the polyphony. So let's leave it like that. And then let's go into each preset and see the kind of parameters that we can change. So again, I'm going to mute B. I'm going to the parameters of, um, this is P 
parameters. If you press it again, you get into A. So we've got mix, we've got levels. Shift A, what's that? Oh, I think this is the notes. Major, second, minor. Okay, so this sign here means it's tempo synced, and to go in and out of that, you press these two buttons on the right together. So you see it's gone, and these are in milliseconds, or seconds. And then when you turn it into tempo sync, you can do it. I'm trying to make this one slightly more extreme than things that I've done before. Okay, let's leave it like that. That sounds kind of nuts. Um, okay, and then if I want to do the same and look at the overdrive settings, because this is a distortion, got to be a little bit careful about gain staging here. So you want to make sure that it's not massively louder than the in input signal. Okay, let's leave it like that. We might maybe a little bit more. Okay, thank God I can bypass it now. So for me, level two is about creating your own level of craziness and allocating them to your own list. So I've done that here at the moment. There are six, but if you, if you go into bank mode here, by holding down the select button. We can then see that we have quick access to Cryverb, Twisted Echo, Cryverb I did in a previous video, which I will link down below, Twisted Echo and the current crazy one. And once you're in a bank, I mean, this is uh, bypassed, but if we use these pedals, we can very quickly switch between them. So we have the same input signal. This is quite a nice subtle kind of stereo widening. So this is quite nice. It's quite a subtle stereo widening um, crystal reverb. We go into the... So you can see you could use these in different parts of the same song because you've got the same signal going in. And obviously within each one, you've still got the ability to change your quick knobs. So we can completely change how each one sounds within the bank, go straight back. As soon as you press these, it just switches over. Some of the, you can change whether you get the tails from one feeding into the other, which is nice. And then you can go quickly to the craziness. Which you could see maybe you use and then filter out and later and use as a sort of build up when you're going into the part of the... Uh... So if you press the button straight away, it immediately switches. If you press it again, it bypasses it. If I then press one of the other ones, which is not bypassed, the effect goes straight in. But you get the tails to the old one, which I think is quite cool, actually. And you can just... Talk about creating variations just by... Okay, so the JK Crazy still sounds crazy. I'm not sure that's usable, but the other two are nice. Okay, so this is level three on the H90. You'll see I have a friend with me, a Boss Distortion DS1 pedal. This is plugged into the inputs and outputs number three on the back. So we have our same slightly annoying melody in the background for comparison. If I turn on this uh, new program that I've just created, JK Phase, which has a hot saws and a phaser, it sounds like this. It sounds quite nice. At the moment, this pedal is not being, is not on, it's not in the signal chain at all. So, but if you want to sound, see what that sounds like on its own, this is where the power of the multiple inputs and the routing really comes into it. So if I turn it on, but then actually bypass each of the algorithms by pressing A twice and B twice, and we go into routing, you'll see that the signal's coming in, it's going into the hot source effect here, and then the phaser, and then out, but they're both greyed out at the moment. This is set up as insert one, and insert one is off. If I turn it on, it, a little one appears on the signal path, and we're going in to the pedal, and out, and not through the H90s effects at all. And this is what this pedal sounds like. You can affect the level of distortion, you can affect the tone, 
more high harmonics or more low harmonics. I keep it both these at 12 o'clock for now. And what you can do with this routing pedal is if I just show you by turning the middle knob here, you can change the position of where it is. So in this position, the root, the signal will be going through this pedal and in parallel through the two algorithms here. And if I turn it again, it then goes after the first effect, but before the second effect, or at the end of the chain. So let's start with it at the start of the chain and turn on our effects. And I can turn it on and off here. You'll see how different it sounds when we move it around the signal chain. So that is this pedal and the H90 in parallel. This is between the two, which I think sounds pretty amazing actually. Really distort the signal before it goes into the phaser. And then at the end of the chain, where it adds a bit of sort of guitar fuzz. And this would probably need to be a bit more subtle. So if I turn down distortion, yeah, it just kind of destroys the signal a bit. More. Not very subtle pedal, this particular one. But we can do more than this. We can then move the H90 into parallel. So if I turn the insert off for a second, there you go, pressing it turns it off. If I make this parallel, okay, so we're now going into the hot source and the phaser in parallel, so you're getting both of them. And goes from this. I quite like that, to be honest. This particular one probably sounds better in parallel. And then if we play with where the insert goes, the distortion, we have many, many more options. And this is where it gets really creative. And so if I put it at the start of the signal chain, it then splits and goes to both effects. And I turn it on. Nice, a kind of subtle, subtle effect, nice. But we keep going, we can put it just before the algorithm on the A side, which in this case is called hot source. So again, that's quite subtle because we're still getting the phaser on uh, the input signal. And that is just before the phaser. Again, I think that sounds pretty good. So we're distorting it. May have to play with the gain levels as we're doing this. We keep going. Now we have all three in parallel, which is also quite cool, I think. So we have three effects going on to the same signal. So we go from this to this. That's when this pedal starts to become really cool. So many different effects. We can keep going. We can put it after the top, the A side. Again, destroys it a little bit. It's actually better going after the phaser. What about a low? Distort the bass a bit more. I think that sounds pretty good, to be honest. And the final one's at the end of the chain. I think this will probably destroy it a bit too much again. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it's certainly an effect. I think I'd prefer it there, to be honest. And then if you press one of these buttons, you get back out, and we are from this to this in an instant. And that's what I would call level three on the H90, where you're using the effects themselves, you're creating a combination that doesn't exist out of the box. You're adding your own effects into the signal chain and playing around with it. And of course, remember, I've only got one here. You can have another external pedal, and so you'd have four to play with. And so you could have a fantastic combination of effects that would really change. It's a very simple input sound to something really quite interesting. Well, hopefully that's given you a good overview of what you can achieve with the H90 from taking the basics 
as a beginner, really making those sounds into something that you really own, then maybe setting up some snapshots, some banks, some crazy effects, and ultimately adding external pedals as well, and then changing the routing, maybe even on the fly as you're recording. It's a really amazingly powerful instrument. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.